G'day guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to derive circular motion formulas. So let's say that we have a particle just here, and let's say that this particle is swooping at a circular path. So let me quickly draw the circular path it is in fact swooping out. This is it. Let me move that into shape just there. There we go. And let's define its position at any time t. So let's say that we create an axis just here, centered at the origin of the circle, and let's say at any time t it has a position x in the horizontal, and a position y from the vertical just here. Okay? Now, of course, we can also go one step further and define a position vector. We can say that a position vector here can be drawn, and let's call that capital R just there, and let's say that any particular time the angular displacement um, from this axis is theta. So that's what I'm defining as theta just here. And we can say that r, our position vector, can be written as x times by our i unit vector plus, plus y times by our j unit vector. Where of course i and j are just unit vectors along the x-axis and the y-axis respectively, right? Okay, now of course another way, equivalent way we could express this is using the standard notation x, y like this. This means this by definition. Now of course we can also describe this yet another way in terms of the magnitude of our um, position vector. We can define lowercase r as being the magnitude of our position vector, as, 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 which is this just here, and we can write this as r cosine theta r sine theta. And in case you don't know how I did that, it's just simple trig. What I realized was this right here is a distance r, this right here is a distance x, this right here is a distance y, and this is theta. That means x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. I hope that makes sense. Okay, well now we're ready to proceed. We know that our velocity vector, so that's the velocity vector of our particle just here, by definition is d theta dt of r, right? And of course, this is just a matter of differentiating this expression above. So once we differentiate that, what do we get? Well, r is a constant, so that's easy to get. So that's going to be r times by minus, in fact, let me bring the minus out the front. It's going to be r times by minus sine theta. And of course, this is theta, not t. So that means we need to account for it by timesing it by theta dot. Now, theta dot is d theta dt. All, right? All I've done is use the chain rule just here. Right, and now let's differentiate the bottom one. That's just going to be r cosine theta times theta dot as well. Now I'll be talking about how to simplify this expression out shortly, but right now let's get an expression for our acceleration. We know that our acceleration vector can be written as d theta, sorry, d dt of v, d dt of v, and what is that? Well, that's just this differentiated, which it turns into what? Well, we'll definitely need to apply the chain rule here. Now notice d dt of any function u and v, where u and v are both functions of time, is u dash v plus v dash u. This is the chain rule, and I'm going to be applying this just here. Notice I'm going to differentiate this one first and then leave that. So it's going to be minus r cosine theta times theta dot, right, times by this one, which is theta dot. Let me draw that in green, times theta dot. Now let's, now let's leave this and differentiate that one. That's going to be minus r sine theta times by theta double dot. Okay, that's the first element differentiated. Now let's differentiate this one. Let's differentiate this term first. It's gonna be minus r sine theta, theta dot, and then times by this theta dot just here. Ta-da. Now let's differentiate this one and leave this one the same. That's gonna be plus r cosine theta, theta double dot, because once again, when we differentiate theta dot with respect to time, we're left with theta double dot. Okay, so it seems like we're done. We've got our velocity vector and our acceleration vector, but we're got a whole, we've got a whole bunch of signs and differentials everywhere. This is something we really need to fix up. And to do that, let's introduce two more unit vectors. So let's draw our particle at some time t just here. And let's define two unit vectors. Let's define a unit vector, let's call it ET, which is defined to be tangential to our path. So if I were to draw this on this big map, this is ET just here, that's ET, okay? 
and it's it's a unit vector so it has a magnitude of one right and let's also define another unit vector which is going to be normal to our path right and let's call that en right t stands for tangent tangent and n stands for normal okay and of course we can understand their their angles they're pointing out by extending this to the center of the circle like this and realizing this is in fact theta okay so notice this is just a zoomed out um, point on our, of our particle just here. And of course, from geometry, we can tell this right here is theta, and we can tell that this right here is also theta. So let's understand this a little bit more by drawing the magnitude of ET just here. This right here, what I'm drawing is the magnitude of ET. And because it's a unit vector, it has a magnitude of one at this angle. And let's draw its sides. We know that theta is here, which means that this right here must be one times by sine theta. In fact, let's make a little bit of space. And that means we know that this right here is gonna be one times by cosine theta, okay? Now, let's draw the magnitude of En. This right here is the magnitude of En, and of course, because it's, because it's a unit vector, it has a magnitude of one. And this is gonna be its sides. And of course, this right here is theta. So this is gonna be one times by cosine theta. And this is gonna be one times sine theta. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the purpose of doing this? Well, the purpose of doing that is to express en and et in terms of i and j. So let's do this. We know, we know that et, don't forget that's this one just here. This is et, this is our et unit vector can be written as, let's see, in order to get there, you need to go left by one sine theta and up by one cosine theta. So that's gonna be minus, minus sine theta j, sorry, i, minus sine, sine theta i, that's to go left, and then we'll need to plus one cosine theta. So we'll need to plus cosine theta j, okay? And of course, another way we can write this, and I think a more convenient way to write this, is minus sine theta, cosine theta. Okay, so this is our unit vector ET. That's what this is in terms of I and J. Now let's do the exact same thing for EN. This right here is EN, so notice it goes down like this. So that means in order to get there, we need to go left by one cosine theta and down by one sine theta. So this is gonna be minus cosine theta I, that's to get from there to there. I minus sine theta j. And of course, we can rewrite that as minus cosine theta minus sine theta. Fantastic. Now, let me quickly resize this for you. There we go, I've resized it. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the point in defining et and en? Well, the point is to find another way to express our velocity vector and our acceleration vector in terms of et and en, and you'll find out they fit quite closely. So let's qu have another quick look at our velocity vector v. We know it's, it's this expression just here, so let's suck out an r and a theta dot from this expression. It's gonna be r theta dot, and it's gonna be times by minus sine theta cosine theta. Now, is there anything funny about this expression that you realize? Hopefully there is. Minus sine theta cosine theta is actually just et. So we can write this as r theta dot times by et. et, our unit vector in a tangential direction. Now we can go one step further. Let me quickly write to the side a list of a few things I'm gonna define. I'm going to define theta dot as our angular velocity, as our angular velocity omega. And I'm going to also define theta double dot, so that's our time derivative of theta twice, as our angular acceleration alpha, okay? So I'll, I'll show you where these plug into this soon, but right now you can see theta dot is just omega, so let's plug that in real quick. We know that our velocity vector can be written as r omega times by e t, right? So this is already a very useful expression. This shows that our velocity vector of our particle is purely in the tangential direction. In other words, if I were to draw this here, our, our velocity vector would look like this, and it would have a magnitude of r omega. Now that's not all we know. We also know that our acceleration vector can be written as this beast just here, and so let me write that out, and let's, let's separate these two terms. This can be written as minus r cosine theta 
theta dot squared and minus r sine theta theta dot squared. I think you see where I'm going with this, but I'll do it anyway, nice and slow. Plus, let's see, it'll be r sine theta theta double dot r, sorry, that should be minus just there, r cosine theta theta double dot. Okay, now of course, what we can do is we can suck out the r and the theta dot squared. So let's do that from this term. That's going to be r theta dot squared. Let's leave the negative in there. And then that's going to be minus cosine theta and then minus sine theta. And let's bring out the r and the theta double dot here. So that's going to be plus r theta double dot. Or if we like, we can make the direct substitution for alpha just here. Let's do that. Save a few steps. Alpha times by sine theta minus sine theta cosine theta. Okay, this is good. Okay, so let me let me bring this up over here. Actually, let me quickly resize this. There we go. I've resized this, but I've left this the same size just here to signify its importance. Okay, so where were we? Okay, we were simplifying this expression out. Okay, well, what's minus cosine theta minus sine theta? Well, that is en. That is our unit vector in the normal direction. Okay, that, that's fantastic. That's this just here. So we can make the direct substitution. This is just going to be r omega squared times by en, right? That's this direct substitution into here. And then plus r alpha times minus sine theta cosine theta. That's this, which is et. Et. Ta-da! Isn't that a much cleaner expression for our acceleration vector? In fact, let me write that in blue so I don't confuse you. This is our acceleration vector just here. And let me box that to make it real important. There we go. So we're pretty much done. I just want to say there's another way you can write your acceleration vector, which is sometimes um, uh, more useful than this way of writing it. Okay, and to do that, let me quickly go back to this expression just here. Let's find the magnitude of our velocity vector, and let's call it lowercase v, which is your speed. This is the magnitude of your velocity vector. Well, we can tell that because our velocity vector is purely in the tangential direction, its magnitude must be r omega, r omega. So basically, the length of this um, velocity vector is simply r omega, okay? And we can differentiate our speed to get r alpha. And let me write that in blue. It's going to be r, r alpha. Okay, so that's just differentiating this beast just here. Notice r is constant, so you don't need to differentiate that. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, what's the point in doing that? Well, the point is to solve for omega and plug it into here. What we can do is we can say our acceleration vector can be written as r plugging in the omega squared. Well, that'll just be v squared r squared on r, which turns into v squared on r. v squared on r, and don't forget we times it by en to show that that's the component in the normal direction. And then we add that to r alpha. Don't forget, r alpha is just v dot. So that's just going to be v dot. So that's our dv dt. That's the time derivative of our speed. And we times that by et. And let me box that in blue. That's a. Ta-da. OK, fantastic. So what we've covered is we've got an expression for our velocity and two equally valid expressions for our acceleration vector. Now, in case this isn't completely clear, let me, let me just um, show you what's happening on this circle again. So let me, let me draw a particle just here. This is our velocity vector, completely tangential to our path, r omega, right? This is our acceleration. It's got a component, et, um, it's got a component in the tangential direction, which is the coefficient of et, r alpha, or if you like, you can write it as v dot. It's up to you. Both are equivalent to each other. And it's got a component which is normal to the curve. So it's heading in this direction. And it's, and it's r omega squared, or if you like, v squared on r. Both are equivalent ways of expressing this. So this is what's happening. So you could actually redraw it here, but I don't want to make it too messy. This is its velocity, and what's in blue is its acceleration. I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.